So we'll start the evening with a public hearing. And the purpose of the public hearing is to provide an opportunity for the public to provide input and comments regarding community needs. The City of Urbana is working to draft the annual action plan for 2024-25 fiscal year. The annual action plan will outline the goals and budget for activities in fiscal year 2024-25. Notice of this public hearing was placed on the City of Urbana's website on January 22nd, 2024 and publicly posted at the City Building on January 23rd, 2024. So now staff is going to make a presentation on the annual action plan process. Um, before that, can I um, call the roll? Yes, you may. Thank you. Sorry about that. Commissioner Jones? Here. Commissioner Williams? Here. Commissioner Freeman? Here. Commissioner Silvis? Here. Commissioner Diana. Thank you. Hopefully everyone can see the slides on their screen. Um, so tonight's public hearing, as uh, Ann mentioned, is um, to gain public input on um, the City of Urbana and Urbana Home Consortium Annual Action Plan for fiscal year 2024-2025. I think all of you have probably been through this process before, but I'll just provide a little overview of what this planning process looks like, um, the different HUD uh, funding sources that the plan covers, and, uh, and then provide an opportunity for you to, to give input um, as well. So just for some context, so um, our annual action plan is we have to complete every year and submit to HUD. It's part of our, it's a one year part of our five year consolidated plan. So our current consolidated plan period is 2020 through 2024. Um, so next year we will be um, creating a new consolidated plan. Um, so this annual action plan will cover fiscal year 24, 25. So it will cover uh, July 1, 2020, for through uh, June 30th of 2025. And it will outline the activities and the projects that we intend to um, undertake with our HUD funding during that time period. So um, I just wanted to start with some of the accomplishments from our previous annual action plan period. Uh, this is the, the, the current year. Um, so these are some of the programs that we ran and some uh, numbers of, of households um, helped. I believe the accomplishments 22-23, I believe, is inaccurate. It should be 23-24 because that's the current year that we're in right now. Um, so these are some of the programs that we uh, operated and, again, just show some of the, the, the impact that we've had on the community. So for the 24-25 uh, fiscal year, we are anticipating um, a, uh, an allocation of the Community Development Block Grant, um, around $450,000. Um, and then for our Home Investment Partnership funding, um, we're anticipating about $750,000 from HUD for that program. And I'll go over the differences between each of these um, grant programs in a minute. Um, just one note, the Home Investment Partnership, we are in a consortium with the City of Champaign and also Champaign County. So that $750,000 is um, kind of shared among each of those entities but the CDBG funding um, is just uh, to be spent here in the city of Urbana for Urbana residents so the community community development block grant is a very uh, flexible uh, pot of funding that we get from HUD every year um, the primary purpose of CDBG funding is that it benefits low-income residents um, so again, as you can see here, there's a wide variety of different um, eligible activities that we can fund with our CDBG money. That includes public services, um, public facility improvements, minor infrastructure improvements such as street lighting and sidewalks, um, removal of slum and, and blight projects, um, down payment assistance programs for low income residents, and then also housing rehabilitation um, for, for low income residents as well. Uh, so the, our home funding um, is it's a little bit more targeted specifically on the development of affordable housing. So um, 
home eligible activities include providing rental assistance to low income renters, uh, constructing affordable housing, and also constructing special needs housing for low income uh, individuals. So as part of our um, annual action planning process, which we will be undertaking over the next couple months, um, the public process is really important to that. Again, the city receives this funding from HUD. We want to be responsive to what the community's needs are. We want to be designing programs and funding programs that meet those needs and that really make an impact on the community. So getting the community's feedback is, is is a very important part of the process. So this public hearing today is part of that, but it's not the it's not the last opportunity that people will have. Um, so we will ha be having a 30 day public comment period beginning on March 1st, and it, that will run through March 31st. Um, and at that time on March 1st, we will actually be making our draft annual action plan available to the public for them to read. Um, you know, we will be having another public hearing in March for uh, at the Community Development Commission. We will be presenting the plan at City Council. So again, a lot of opportunity for public feedback. Um, and again, so the, the draft plan will be made available publicly on March 1st, and then members of the public will have uh, 30 days to, to provide, um, you know, written comment um, on, on that draft plan. We will also be doing a community needs survey. That's something we've done every year. We've gotten really good feedback in the past um, on our surveys that we send out to the community. And we will also be presenting the plan to a variety of different focus groups and interest groups in the community. So I know we say this every year, but if any of you have groups or meetings that you attend or that you know of that you think would really like this information and that would like to be able to learn about the annual action plan, learn about our HUD funding, and provide input and thoughts on how we can spend this money, please let, let us know. We're happy to come out and um, meet people where they're at, come to their existing meetings already. But again, we will be having um, our public hearing process here at the city as well that people are always um, uh, welcome to attend. So. Um, Anyone can provide comment through giving us a call. That's our, our, uh, our number there in the grants division. They can also provide a written comment via email to our, our grants inbox, grants at urbanaillinois.us. Um, also, people are always uh, welcome to come to either this meeting, the Community Development Commission, or to City Council to provide um, comment as well. So um, that's all that I have. I'm certainly happy to answer any questions, but also I'll open the floor um, if you have any, um, you know, comment or, or things that you would like to share. I will also just say as, a cap, as an addition, when you're presenting, if you could please make sure you're, the green light is on and then pull the mic close to your face. Sometimes people on the audio have a hard time hearing. Any questions or comments for Braden about the annual action plan? So if anyone, um, now the public hearing part of this can open, right? Um, so if anyone wants to express their views regarding the proposed um, amendments or the, or the annual action plan, um, now is the time to make those comments. Anybody? So um, seeing that there are no comments, the public hearing portion of our meeting is closed. And we can move on to the commission meeting. Thank you. So for our commission meeting, um, I think we need another roll call. OK. Commissioner Jones. Here. Commissioner Williams? Here. Commissioner Freeman? Here. Commissioner Silvis? Here. Commissioner Diana? Thank you. Thank you. We have a quorum. So the first item on our agenda is to um, look at the minutes from our January 9th meeting. Those minutes were included in your packet. Do we have a motion for approval of the minutes from January 9th? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from January 9th, 2024. Thank you. Is there a second? I second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? 
Questions, comments, corrections? None? Okay. We have a motion and a second. All in favor of the motion to approve the minutes of January 9th, 2024, say aye. 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 Approved, opposed, same sign. The ayes have it, and the minutes from January 9th, 2024 are approved. Are there any additions to the agenda that we have for this evening? There are no additions. No additions, okay. And is there any public input for this evening's commission meeting? So that takes us to item five on our agenda, which is the staff report. Yes, thank you. Um, so just a couple updates for, for the commission. So um, our it, some good news. We received notice from HUD that our consolidated annual performance evaluation report that we're required to submit every year to HUD was approved and accepted by HUD, which is always a great sign. So that's the report where we um, report on our activities and our accomplishments of the previous year. So um, that's some good news from HUD. Um, and then OMA certi certificates. I don't know if we were still waiting on anyone to get their certificates into us. We need to have those on file um, for the Open Meetings Act. So if you have any questions about that, feel free to talk to Hillary and so we can get those on file. That would be appreciated. Um, and then lastly, I just wanted to mention that um, our Youth Services Grant application for the 2024-2025 fiscal year will be launching uh, on Thursday, uh, February 1st. So we're very excited about this program. Um, applications will be open for uh, nonprofit agencies that provide uh, programming or, or um, uh, different activities for low-income youth in Urbana. Those applications will be open from uh, February 1st through April 1st. Um, so this year, we have a total of $100,000 available in funding for nonprofit agencies that provide um, services or programming for uh, low-income Urbana youth. Um, we will staff will be uh, holding two grant assistance workshops for interested agencies if they want to learn more about how to apply um, or what types of programs can be funded. Um, those uh, grant assistance meetings will be taking place on Friday, February 9th from noon to 1 p.m. and on Tuesday, March 14th. Uh, from also from 12 to 1 p.m. And those will be held virtually on, on Zoom. So again, a good opportunity if there's any agencies out there um, who uh, are interested in applying for funding, they can attend those to learn more about that. Um, so a little bit just more on the, the uh, focus areas, areas of the Youth Services Grant. So um, the emphasis is placed on three key service areas, including uh, health, wellness, and opportunity. We're really looking to fund programs that make an impact on the community, um, you know, particularly uh, in the areas of violence prevention, um, mentoring programs, trauma support, um, workforce development, and job training. So um, it's a really great funding opportunity, and we're very excited to be launching that again for next year. So. Um, any, uh, any agencies that might be interested can reach out to me directly and I'm happy to answer any questions that they might have. Um, so other than that, I don't have anything else on the staff briefing unless anyone has any questions. I did have a question. What, um, what did you say the dates were again for that to open up? Yeah, so... Oh, yes, thank you. And um, so the funding will be, so for agencies that are um, selected uh, for funding, the, the funding will start July 1 of 2024 and will run through June 30th, 2025. Any other questions about the staff report? Uh, that takes us to... Um, Item six, which is any unfinished business. Is there any unfinished business to come before the commission this evening? No. Okay. And that brings us to new business. And there is uh, a list of um, several resolutions. And what I think we should do is treat these as an omnibus. So what Braden will do is go through and describe each one of us. And then we'll have a motion that um, lists all of them. And we can vote on all of them at once. So the first thing we'll do is just go through and hear 
resolution by resolution, uh, a summary and the perspective. Yeah, so um, this is another part of our annual sort of grant process. So some of you might um, be familiar with this. So every year, the Urbana uh, Home Consortium provides home funding to um, our community housing development organizations, or CHOTOs, that's the acronym that I'm going to be using. So um, so we have the, the same funding cycle every year. So um, before you tonight, are um, there are two resolutions certifying uh, both Habitat for Humanity of Champaign County and First Followers uh, as uh, certified community housing development organizations. And then there are uh, developer agreements and operating agreements for both agencies as well. And I will also point out that Marlon Mitchell from First Followers and uh, Chad Hoffman from Habitat for Humanity are here with us tonight. So we definitely want to uh, recognize them uh, and thank them for all their uh, service to the community in supporting affordable housing uh, in, in Champaign County. So. Um, what we are asking tonight is that you will all vote to forward these resolutions to the City uh, city Council Committee of the Whole for consideration uh, in February. So I'll provide a little bit of infor more information about, about these, uh, these resolutions. Um, so the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development requires that CHOTOs are certified on an annual basis. So that's those, those first, uh, the first, uh, CHOTO certification that you see there for, for Habitat and then also for first followers. Um, there are certain eligibility requirements that nonprofit agencies have to meet in order to be uh, certified as CHOTOs. So both first followers and Habitat for Humanity have, uh, have met that threshold and are eligible to be certified. So those two resolutions are just saying that we are certifying them. And then that makes them eligible to receive um, funding through the, the Home Investment Partnership Program. So based on project applications that we received from Habitat and First Followers, um, we are recommending $125,000 in project development support for Habitat for Humanity, which will support the creation of five affordable housing units in Urbana and Champaign. In addition to that $125,000 in project development costs, we're also recommending $32,500 in operating support for Habitat for Humanity, and that is funding that can be used for, uh, for staff support, um, administrative costs, and things like that related to the development of affordable housing. Um, for first followers, we are recommending uh, $30,000 in project support, which will go to support the development of one affordable uh, rental unit in Champaign. And we are also recommending uh, $6,500 in operating support as well. There is a chart um, included in your packet that outlines the addresses of, of each of the projects and the funding amount as well. Um, so, Having said that, I'll, I'll take any questions, but as Anne mentioned, um, you know, we're requesting that this be voted on as an omnibus, so you can vote on them all at the same time and then forward them to City Council, uh, to Committee of the Whole with a recommendation for approval. Um, but I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. I don't have any questions. I, I do want to publicly thank these gentlemen for you know the, the work that you guys do. Um, and, and providing the access to affordable housing to these folks. I've witnessed firsthand, you know, the work that Marlon and the guys do, and I, I can attest that you guys do an amazing job. And I've seen the work, you know, being done, obviously, through Habitat as well. So I just want to say thank you. So, Braden, I'm glad that you introduced this with the explanation of the um, the shared agenda for Urbana, Champaign, and Champaign County, because that uh, we see that several of these addresses are Champaign addresses. One is Urbana, but that funding is for all of them. That's correct. So, because it's a home consortium funding, it um, it can be used anywhere in in Urbana or Champaign or unincorporated Champaign County. So any other questions about any of these recommendations? So I'll entertain a motion that includes um, all of them, if anyone wants to gear up and make that motion. Just so moved. 
I, do we have to read all of them into the record, or can we just reference the list? So um, in order to create the omnibus, um, um, a member will need to move to combine all of them as an omnibus, and, and that will require that you read each of the resolutions title, resolution okay, titles. Okay, so the first, rec <laughs> the first motion would be create the omnibus. Correct. The second would be to forward that. Okay. Correct. I would so move that we would uh, suspend our regular rules and that we might include these into one omnibus package. Is there a second? A second. Thank you, Patty. So the motion on the table is to uh, make an omnibus out of the resolutions that we have on the agenda. Um, do you want me to read those? Yes, please. Okay. Certifying Community Housing Development Organization for ha Urbana Home Consortium Habitat Chodo certification for 2023. The second is the resolution approving and authorizing the execution of Urbana Home Consortium Community Housing Development Organization Agreement Habitat Chodo operating for, f for 2023. The resolution approving and authorizing the execution of Urbana Home Consortium Community Development Organization Agreement for Habitat Chodo for developer for 2023 a resolution certifying community housing development organization for the Urbana Home Consortium for first followers, CHOTO certification 2023, a resolution approving and authorizing the execution of an Urbana Home Consortium community housing development organization agreement for first followers for their operating for 2023, and finally, the resolution authorizing approving and authorizing the execution of an Urbana Home Consortium Community Housing Development Organization Agreement for first followers for their developer for 2023. So there's our list for the omnibus. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a motion and a second. And did we approve that yet? No, okay, so um, all in favor of that omnibus, um, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed say same sign. The ayes have it, and we have an omnibus. Now, <clears throat> I'll entertain a motion for the recommendation for that omnibus to council. I move to move this to city council. Thank you, Patty. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. The ayes have it, and the omnibus is, omnibus is forwarded to council with a recommendation for approval. So let's see. That takes us to. I guess they're the last item on our agenda, which is adjournment. Is there? Do do either of you want to make any comments before the commission? We. Really appreciate you being here. Appreciate all that you do for the community. Come up and um, state your name and organization for the record and get close enough to the mic that we can hear it. Good evening. Good evening. So my name is Marlon Mitchell. I'm the executive director of First Followers. Uh, I just wanted to talk, first of all, just thank you all for uh, passing the resolution to move it forward to city council. Um, just talking about a little bit about the history of the work that we're doing uh, with the with the Chodo uh, funds. So I think this is probably our third year of receiving the funds or about to receive the funds. And one of the things that I'm really excited about is uh, about a year and a half ago when Sheila was sitting in the seat uh, with, with Breeden, uh, where Breeden is. And um, she called me up and she had a uh, property that was here located uh, 1407 Wiley uh, here in Urbana. And the property had been sitting vacant for at least nine, ten years, at least a decade. And it was uh, a property that was uh, damaged in fire. And so it was vacate, vacant for years. And, you know, as the property went through the course of Abana, uh, obtaining the property from the, uh, the original owners, uh, she called me up and she said, you know, is this something that you all could use? And so, you know, after having a conversation with her, went out visited the property, looked around. It was in terrible, terrible shape. Uh, I'd been sitting there for years. I think the only thing that had uh, been updated on it was the roof. And so uh, so my guys and I, we got the property. It was, it was uh, watered to us from the city of Urbana. And so we got the property and we did a total, total, what do we call a demo, total demo. 
And so we renovated that property. And so we just finished renovations. We're still, still got a couple little things to, to tighten up. Uh, as a matter of fact, the city of Urbana will be out tomorrow to uh, do an inspection on the electrical work. But it was a total demo and a total renovation. And so I'm just here, standing here proud to say that the work that we've done and the collaboration with the city government and with the federal funds that we have, uh, this is just a testament of how things should work, right? Because again, our mission is to, number one, provide <coughs> workforce developments for some young men who have been uh, impacted with the, by the criminal justice system. So that's what our workforce deve development training program is all about, uh, finding labor and uh, hiring them to do the work, but at the same time, putting the property back into affordable housing spaces. And so this is just a model. This was something that was uh, between Sheila and myself and all the other partnerships that we came up with. And this is just a start of something that I believe to move forward in the future that we can really, really grow this because this is what it's all about. You know, city government coming together with not-for-profit, not-for-profit doing the services for the community and just giving back. So I would like to thank you all for, you know, again, passing <clears throat> the resolution and we can see where we can go from here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell, and thanks for all you do. That's a great success story. I'm glad that's in the record. <laughs> I know it's in the record in other ways, too, but it's nice to hear that. Hello, I'm Chad Hoffman with Habitat for Humanity of Champaign County. I want to thank the commission as well. We do appreciate the support we've had over the years. Without these funds, we wouldn't be able to build um, across the community, and we are truly really the only one building entry-level low-income housing for home ownership so it's huge that these dollars are are coming to us and it's important to us too we 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 construct our board with this in mind and and know that we have members of our community and, and low-income representation on our board to to make sure we're serving those um that that we need to serve so it's it's great that this is moving forward again and we appreciate the support so. thanks chad uh, any comments from the commissioners before we adjourn? So having exhausted our agenda, uh, I declare the commission meeting adjourned. Thank you. Okay.